Now that we know um, the fact that we do have different groups of hormones based on their chemical nature, let us get into the details of the specific groups. Let's talk about proteins or peptides. So when we talk about proteins or peptides, obviously we're talking about amino acid. And it is the specific amino acid sequence that confer their specificity. So depending on the sequence of amino acid, that's how these hormones uh, will become specific to certain action or certain uh, targets. So protein or peptides hormone have the following characteristics. One, they are synthesized as pre-hormones or pre-pro-hormones. So the point here is they are synthesized as inactive hormones. So understanding that as a group characteristics can tell a lot about individual hormones that belongs to this group, right? Number two, they are stored in membrane-bound secretory vesicles. And I need to explain this. We have said that protein or peptides are water-soluble, right? And because they are water-soluble, they can easily be confined in membrane-bound secretory vesicles because membrane is lipid in nature and a water-soluble substance cannot cross the plasma membrane. So this is the reason why they can actually be confined into the secretory vesicle. So that's why they can be stored. Later on, we'll see the difference. Number three, they are regulated at the level of secretion and synthesis. This is a very important point that I will talk. Uh, I, I will give the details later when I show the diagram. But basically, what it say is um, you have um, inactive hormone being produced and then it is being activated, but it's not being released. Instead, it is being stored. And then when a stimulus comes, it is being released. So this is the reason why it is being controlled at the level of its secretion and synthesis. Of course, we will talk, um, uh, we, we, will, we will discuss the details later. So the fourth characteristics is they often circulate in blood and bound. This is what I mentioned before. So they don't need any plasma protein. And the reason is a large part of plasma is actually water. And protein hormones are water soluble. So they can easily be carried in plasma. This is the reason why they don't need to be facilitated by any carrier protein. So number five, they are usually administered by injection. So we go back to insulin, which is a good example of a peptide hormone. And we said the reason why they are administered by injection is because they cannot be taken orally. One, because they are protein. If they are taken orally, they will be digested by enzymes. And two, because they are water soluble. That means they won't be able to cross the plasma membrane. So absorption won't be that effective. So they need to be administered by injection. Because they are water soluble, they can easily get into uh, the body fluids and eventually get into the circulation. So this is the reason. And this is why I said water solubility and lipid solubility are very important characteristics to understand when it comes uh, to understanding the groups of hormones. Number six, they are hydrophilic. So they are water lovers. So they are water soluble. So this tells a lot. It tells about their half-life. It tells about their circulation, as we have already seen, that they circulate freely and bound. And because they circulate freely and bound, and they can easily uh, circulate uh, in blood and plasma, they can also easily escape the capillaries because they can easily get into the body fluids. So they usually have short half-life. We will also talk uh, more about this later. Number seven, they signal through membrane receptors. This is important and there's a reason for that. Simply because they are water soluble. That means they are not lipid soluble. And if they are not lipid soluble, that means they cannot cross plasma membrane. Since they cannot cross plasma membrane, they need receptors 
on the plasma membrane for their effect to be taken into the cells. So you will see the difference when we talk about the steroid hormones. So this is another thing that we need to talk about just to explain a little bit about the uh, protein or peptides hormone, their synthesis, storage, and release. So take a look at this cell. You have a nucleus here, you have a DNA, and then you have transcription into messenger RNA. And this is where you have a pre-pro hormone being produced. So basically you have inactive hormone. So these hormones are actually um, getting into rough endoplasmic reticulum as inactive and they undergo certain changes. They get into the uh, Golgi apparatus where they get packaged and you get an active hormone. And eventually the active hormone will actually move uh, from the Golgi apparatus to the secretory vesicles where it will be stored. So these hormones won't be released. They will be stored in membrane-bound secretory vesicles because they are water-soluble. They won't be able to escape. If they were lipid-soluble, they can cross the membrane. So they will escape. Because they are water-soluble, they can actually be confined into the secretory vesicle. They will only be released when you have a stimulus. When you have a stimulus by exocytosis, these hormones will be released. So if you take a look at this diagram, it tells a lot about the synthesis, storage, and release of peptide hormones. As we said, they are synthesized as pre-hormones, basically inactive hormones, and then they undergo some packaging within the Golgi apparatus where they become active hormones, and they are stored until release. So they are stored, and you cannot release them until when you have a stimulus, for example, high blood glucose. So high blood glucose is a stimulus that will cause exocytosis of secretory vesicles, and then you will have insulin being released. So this is the characteristics of peptide hormone, the characteristics of uh, protein hormones. So two main points take home messages that you should understand if you cannot grasp the whole meaning at least you should take home these two points one polypeptide and protein hormones are stored in secretory vesicles until needed i have already explained why can they be stored simply because they are water soluble so they cannot escape through the plasma membrane and they need a stimulus for exocytosis to happen and two, polypeptide and protein hormones are water-soluble. Very important. It tells a lot. They're water-soluble, so they can circulate freely in plasma. They don't need a protein carrier. And because they can circulate freely, they can easily be cleared from plasma. So they usually have shorter half-lives. So this is the reason why I said understanding the chemical nature of hormones can actually tell a lot about specific hormones.